We are almost three hours into trading. It is Wednesday, March 31st. Hello, traders. We've got a really awesome market to look at today. I've had a lot of questions on the 1OP indicator. Great examples I can show you today. Let's start there. I am long the market right now. I'm long SPY. I have been long QQQ twice, two winning trades. And so we'll also take a look at that. QQQ has excellent relative strength. You know that I've been pointing to this downward sloping trend line right here. And you can see how it was violated to the upside. Very bullish. This should give tech stocks lots of upward momentum. A lot of the stocks that are popping today are tech stocks. They've been beaten down. They're starting to gain a bid. I believe that the tech sector will pave the way for the S&P 500 to make a new all-time high. We're within striking distance of it right now. I've also been mentioning in my recent videos that I believe the market bid is starting to strengthen. We should see some end of month, beginning of the month fund buying. We also are going to be on the brink of earnings season. That typically attracts buying. We've got another quarter of profits under our belt. According to analysts, the savings rate is very, very high, and we have approximately $1.3 trillion in cash sitting on the sidelines because of that high savings rate. In a low interest rate environment, that money is going to find its way into the market. It's also going to be spent in stores. I think that we're going to have a really nice breakout. Economic numbers should start to improve dramatically. We saw a really strong ADP report this morning. 517,000 new jobs created in the private sector. I trust ADP's number because they process payrolls for medium and small size companies. So we're going to have the unemployment report on Friday, but that's going to come out when the market is closed. Somewhat unusual, but they're Traders are going to be leaning on this ADP number today. They're also going to be watching initial jobless claims tomorrow morning. That should set the tone. And if you look at the initial jobless claims number, last week it was the lowest that it's been in months. This ADP report was the strongest that it has been since September. States are opening. They're opening up. We're going to see this economic rebound. So I'm pretty excited because I think the market's going to be able to blow through that previous high. Let's take a look at the daily chart, then we'll zoom in. You can see we had this downward sloping trend line right here. Nice bounce off the 50-day moving average. Let's overlay that so that you can see where it came into play. And then this long green candle here, we've been able to hold the gains. I like to see half of this long green candle preserved, which it was. You can see that we tested it a couple of times in the last two days, but it held firm. And now we're actually above the high from Monday. That is excellent. And you can see how we are right on that all-time high. Click GTC, double-click on that candle. There's your alert line. I believe we're going to break out, if not today, tomorrow. So let's take a look at the five-minute chart, and let's really zero in on what that 1OP indicator is telling us. And you can see here that... Typically, it's going to predict what the market is going to be doing. It is anticipatory. Now, we had a very, very light trading day yesterday. And when we have these tight ranges like this, there's not a lot that's going to be happening with any indicator because the market's not going anywhere. So if I take a look at the price action yesterday, we had a bullish cross in here. You can see the market just kind of waffled around, but eventually it did get a little bit of momentum toward the end. And there's our bearish cross and the market sold off. If I go back a previous day, you can see those big spikes and those deep troughs and those crosses a little bit more clearly. And there would be a really good example right there. You've got a big bullish cross taking place right before the low of the day here. There you can see the continuation. Really nice spike in here. Right in here, you're getting your bearish cross right there. And it's telling you, take profits on your long positions. Look for possible weakness in here. So we get this pullback. Then we get our bullish cross right about here early. So you got to let this run its course, draw your downward sloping trend line. There's your upward momentum. So in any event, this is pre-holiday trading, but I want to show you a bullish divergence. So when the indicator starts to move and the market does not move, it also tells us something. About 80% of the time, the indicator is going to predict market movement. 20% when it doesn't predict market movement, it's also telling us something. In fact, these signals tend to be even 
stronger. So here's what I was looking for today. We had an opening gap higher and we were able to hold the gains. Well, that's a good sign because that means that any profit taking has been held at bay. So the sellers come in, they see this nice gap higher, whap, 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 trying to drive that market down and take profits. Well, when they can't push the market lower, eventually it's going to start creeping higher. Well, what we saw here was that during this compression, I said, I'd really love to see this 1OP indicator drop and go very, very deep because that would be a bullish divergence. Normally, we'd be expecting the market to roll over and go down when we get this type of cross. When it doesn't, it shows us that the upward momentum is very strong and that the trend strength is going to be very strong. So in the chat room, I've been mentioning, we want this compression. We do not want to drift very high from the uh, far from the high, and we want to keep moving lower. I mean, it's, we want to prevent from keeping lower. We don't want to see any long red candles. We don't want to see any kind of organized selling. We just want to compress. And so if I put up my 10 squeeze indicator, you can see yellow dots. There's our compression right in there with the 10P indicator falling. As soon as we get that bullish cross, this should be a fantastic move higher. So a bullish divergence indicates that the trend strength is very, very strong. Here you can also see that the market tried to get through this high right here and it hit a little bit of resistance. If this were a buying climax off of that resistance level from Monday, that high from Monday, here's what you would have seen. This red candle would have been instantly erased. Boom, maybe even in one candle, two for sure. And then you start to roll over and drift lower. It's not what happened. Tick, 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 tick. And we we're still able to hold that support level right in there. So now the market has released to the upside. Folks, I think we're going to move much higher in the next week or so as earnings season approaches. We're probably going to see a new high, perhaps even today. So I did want to talk about how to trade compressions also. Compressions are such a powerful trading setup. It's one of my favorites. So there are a couple different ways that you can approach a trade. And, and actually, before I do that, please post your comments and questions in the section below this YouTube video. If you've got questions on a stock, if you have questions on a strategy, if you have questions on technical patterns, please post them because I'm going to try and incorporate them into my videos. I want to make sure that these daily videos have an educational component to them. If you see a question that someone else asks, please give it a thumbs up. That tells me this is an important topic. Compressions were one of the topics that came up. Here you can see a compression right in here. Why is this important and what types of compressions do I like the best? When I get a gap higher like this, as I was mentioning, the tendency will be to give back these gains. Whap, 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 hit that bid, bring it back. When it can't do that and it compresses just like it did here, the yellow dots equal a compression, a green dot indicates that the compression has been breached to the upside, a red dot tells me that the compression has been breached to the downside. Well, what is a compression? It means the prices are getting tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. This is a coiled spring ready to release. The longer and the tighter the compression, the bigger the breakout and the more sustained the movement afterwards. So in this particular case, well, what would you do on a compression? You wouldn't want to take a position ahead of time. You would drop an alert line at the top of the compression, drop an alert line at the bottom of the compression, and then simply wait for it to be resolved. Then you take a position once you know which way it's going. But what I like to look for is stocks that are really, really hot. And let's go through our heavy buying list, and I'll be able to show you some compressions and why I like them best. SQ. Love this one today. This has been such a hot stock from the open. I showed it probably... 10 minutes into the open. Look at that bounce. We are through the 100 day moving average and through this downward sloping trend line. It looks really good. You should focus on tech stocks today. So there are a couple of different formations. Typically, when a trader sees something like this, 
it's really hard to get aboard this type of a move. But this is one of the patterns I like where you see sequential green candles stack one on top of the other without any red candles and without any overlap. That tells me this baby wants to go. Add big volume to the mix and a technical breakout like a 100 day moving average and you have the ingredients for a super, super great trade. So we come up here. So there are a couple of different formations that you can look at as a trader. One is that the stock makes a big move higher and then it retraces. Now, if I got a move like this higher and the stock pulled back substantially, gosh, much more than the halfway point here, and I really wouldn't be interested in it. I'd like at least three quarters of this move to be preserved because that tells me that on a profit-taking move like this, there are sellers, but there are more buyers and they can't knock the stock down. So it compresses. So as opposed to run up, pull back, bullish flag, I love run up, hold the gains, compress, gather steam, gather momentum, and then fly through the high. That to me is a much more desirable trading pattern. And look at this. See those yellow dots? That is your compression. So what you would do is, if you saw a pattern like this, you would wait for that breakout. There, by the way, is the S&P 500 doing what it's supposed to. So I'm going to click alert. I'm going to click on this high right here, and I'm going to click on this high right here. So this is a downward sloping trend line. That would be one way that you could approach it. You could click alert, and then you could double click on the high right here. There's another alert line that drops across like this. Either one of these breakouts from this compression would be excellent for me. I can also search for stocks that have been in a compression, but that have been breaking through that compression. Everything that I show you on a five minute basis is completely valid on a daily chart for swing trades. Absolutely the same principles apply. So don't think that, oh, he's just showing me how to day trade. This applies to swing trades as well. Once you hear that compression and that breakout, zoom, it's gone. So I'm going to put up custom search and I'm going to mark some very desirable variables. Let's clear everything. Clear the upper, clear the lower. Let's start from square one. You know that I like to have very liquid options. So what we're going to do is we're going to be looking for a stock that has great upward momentum. And ADX is one way that we can search for that. HA2 bullish on a daily basis or any of these time frames, that's going to be a very bullish formation. That's a Haken ashy formation, flat green bottom, very powerful. So I can click that. I can click relative strength across a multitude of time frames, showing me that the stock is strong versus the market. But today, I want to look for stocks that are really strong today because I want to show you how we can find stocks right now. And on a micro basis, I'll be able to show you how this works. So let's look at ADX being very bullish on a 15-minute basis. These are going to be some strong trending stocks. Look at this. You got great options, heavy volume today, stock above prior day's high, really, really strong ADX on a 15 minute basis. These stocks are trending. Okay. So let's take a look and I'm, I could do compression in. Okay. So let's say that it's in a compression right now on a five minute basis. Let's search. These are your stocks that are in a compression. Two ways that I can handle that. The easiest, I'm just going to click through these and let's take a look at the candidates and let's look at those five minute charts. I don't want to keep flipping between daily charts uh, and five minute charts. I want to keep this moving. But you can see here, this is retraced. Gap up, there's the low of the day. It's below the low of the day. I'd mentioned to you, I want to see a gap up. Boom, 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 climbing. This does not, I don't like this. This tells me this stock is probably going to fall back and fill the gap. So know that for every five minute chart I'm looking at, I would also look at the daily, but I want to, because I want to see what major moving averages has this stock gone through. Here's a good candidate. You can see F-O-L-D. 
See that compression right there? See how it's able to hold most of these gains? This would be an excellent candidate. So I come through and I just click. I can click GTC or I can click daily. Put that alert line right up in there. I'm going to do one or two more GDX. Look at that. That baby is beautiful and it's compressing even though the stock is moving higher. Pete, how is that even possible? How can a stock be moving higher and compressing? Well, if it made big moves and gyrations in here, even though it's inching, inching, inching higher, those ranges are getting tighter and tighter and tighter. This is also very desirable trading pattern. So again, you would drop your alert right here. Let me know when this thing gets through the high. Let's take a look at that daily chart just to see where it's at. You can see this is not an ideal chart. Yes, it's starting to get through this downward sloping trend line. I'd rather see something a little bit stronger than that on a daily basis. So we're going to continue to take a look at some of these. Uh, let's see. We'll do one more. Well, SQ is there. How about run? Let's do RUN also coming up. No, let's pull too back too far off of the high, off of the high. WBA. This could be a good one. Hey, that's a really nice one. Look at that run and then a compression. The B here indicates that it was earnings before the open. So yes, we absolutely want to drop our alert line right there. So one final note, remember this search that I just ran. I used compression in. What if we went compression out on a five minute basis and searched? Well, GDX just broke through that upper limit and I had just put that alert there. So that's how those alert lines trigger so that you can go right to the chart. But let's say that instead of compression in, I want to see a stock that has resolved that compression on a five minute basis to the bullish side. That's why I'm clicking compression out. And let's take a look at some of these. Also a very good search. ADSK, very nice. Again, you'd want to go into the daily chart. You want to look for those major breakouts through technical resistance. This one's got a downward sloping trend line like that. So yes, for a bottom fisher, you could come in and day trade that on a swing basis. Ah, you could trade it as well if that's your style. It's not my style. I like this a lot. Downward sloping trend line comes above the 200 day moving average, gaps above it, and has a really strong head of steam. This is a compression out on a five minute basis. There was your compression. There's your green dot. There's your compression out. Yes, holding most of that long green candle. This baby's looking ready to go. C H P T. There's SQ. Just take that off. G R W G. And I'll do one more. G R W G. Double bottom high or low through the 100 day moving average. Like it. I'd like it even better on a swing basis through this downward sloping trend line. If I see it, I might as well mark it. May not trigger today, but when it does, I'm going to want to see it. So there we go. And one more eBay. Let's take a look at that. eBay looks great. Downward sloping trend line, breach to the upside. Somewhat technology stock bounces off of that. Major moving averages, 100 day and 200 day, upward sloping trend line here through horizontal resistance, through this prior horizontal resistance. This actually looks very, very good. eBay's got a nice head of steam. And there's our compression right in there. And there's our breakout. That's how you do it. Watch for these compressions. Again, I much prefer when I'm day trading to have a stock that has run up and instead of pulling back and retracing, I don't like it when they retrace more than a quarter of the gains. Half of the gains, ah, eh, very suspicious. Anything, if they give back more than half the gains, I'm out. In fact, on one of the stocks that I showed you where it breached the low price of the day after gapping higher, I'm actually likely to short those just because it tells me that that gap is likely to fill. So when you're day trading, you want stocks that are able to run up hold the gains, compress, and then have another leg higher. And maybe I'll do one more exercise before I quit here. Let's look for a compression on a daily chart, but let's put some stuff in here where this stock has got to be so dang strong on a longer term basis. So let's go in 
uh, relative strength versus the market on a two hour, four hour daily basis, compression in, and let's say that it's got a couple of, uh, oh, let's see, we don't want ADX in here. This alone might give us some really good, uh, yeah, a little bit too restrictive on that because we've got heavy volume as well. So let's just keep checking here. Let's get a couple of stocks on the list and then we can. You always want to start by casting a very wide net and then you can start to draw that net in. And we're not getting anything that's in a compression right now. I think a lot of the stocks are probably breaking out. So if I went to compression out, let's do that instead. And then there's some stocks. So we'll be able to do this on a daily basis. But this would be a search that you would run if you were looking for really good swing trades. So let's go to AMAT. There you can see compression out, compression out. There's your compression. It's out of it. CLF. Right in there. There's your compression. Compression out. Also making a new high. CLF was one of my favorites this morning that I highlighted. You've got your compression out right there. Making a new high on DXC. eBay. Even though the stock was moving higher, you can see it was still compressing in here. And there's your breakout. Do run. And one more X. There you can see run is starting to break out to the upside. Not quite there, in my opinion, as far as strength that I would like to see. There's another beautiful breakout on X. Compressions. Very, very powerful trading pattern. I love it. So you can trade bullish flags, and I do trade bullish flags also. In those instances, I'm only looking for about a quarter pullback from the recent range, that flagpole, if you will. And I do the same thing when I'm day trading. But even better is if you get that big run up, and then the stock just holds. BW has been a uh, stock that I have been swinging because it ran up and it held those gains. And I was in here and then whoosh, moving higher. Really, really nice. So as far as stocks that I like today, I like a number of them in the tech sector. I'm just going to tell you overall, QQQ, belong QQQ, belong tech stocks. This is a beautiful Breakout through that downward sloping trend line. You have a higher low double bottom. Support was tested one, actually one, two, three, four, five times. Now we're off to the races. Downward sloping trend line. Breach to the upside. TLT. Lower bond prices mean higher yields have been weighing on tech stocks. And look, TLT found support yesterday. I think that's one of the reasons that you're starting to see a bid in tech stocks. I like the market. I think the market goes higher. We could even make a new all-time high today. Could make it tomorrow. Watch those employment numbers. We have initial jobless claims tomorrow. Should set the tone for Friday's unemployment report. That's all I've got for you today. Thank you. Please post your comments and let me know what you'd like to have me cover in these videos. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.